Okay. okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Josh Pollock. I'm the community manager for pods. I'm going to take you through the basics of setting up a bi-directional field and show it between two post types and showing them using pods frontier, uh, which is an enhanced templating system on top of pods templates. And the, what this is showing is how you can build a complex content management system on pods with no PHP. We wrote it for you. That was very nice of us. Um, just a little terminology to make sure we're all on the same page. A custom post type that functions just like post, but it's organized into a different system. But it gives you all the features, or less of the features, depending on how you set it up in pods, uh, of a regular post. Custom fields. These are extra metadata fields that you add on to a post that are associated with it. The most common usage of meta fields that a lot of people see is their SEO fields, like Yoast SEO adds your meta title, meta description. Pods is a way of adding any type of meta field that you need to whatever post type that you've added. Pods templates is what we're going to get into. These are our system for using simple magic tag and HTML based markup to display your pods content. Pods right here is a new plugin that's still under development, though all of its template enhancements are totally functional. Close enough. Uh, it's available on uh, GitHub at pods framework slash pods frontier. Um, and also relationship fields. Relationship fields are one of the most powerful parts of pods. They allow you to select another content type as the, not as the custom field value in your, in your content type. And that's what we're gonna be looking at today a lot of. So, Creating post types and fields with pods. Our steps are going to be add the post type, add a field, add a second post type, and then set a relationship between these two post types. Adding post types and pods is pretty simple. We just we go in, we create a new one, we select the custom post type, we give it a name, we give it a plural name. I'm a nerd, so we're using Jedi and Jedi's, right? Um, so we can add a basic text field. Uh, we have simple options. We just give it a name and it'll automatically generate its programmatic name. This is an important distinction, is that the label is what will show up on in the editor, but when we address it in code or in our template, it's going to be this auto-generated name, which we can change, or it's just gonna move to lowercase and put an underscore. So when we use the lightsaber color field in our code or in our template, it's gonna be lightsaber underscore god for the color. We also have uh, image fields. That is a type of media field. Media fields are an actual type of relationship. They're related to the WordPress attachments. So we're able to say, not just give it a name, say it's a file image field. We can select, do we want multiple files? Do we want single files uploaded to this? Do we want to use the WordPress media library for selection? Or do we want to use just a pop-up uh, with PHP uploader? It still goes to the media library, but you're not giving your front end user, if they have access, access to your whole media library. They're just letting them upload a file. And we have different settings. Do we want to say, you know, the image types or video types, these start files. So, creating our uh, bidirectional relationship fields, part one. We're going to, in a minute, add a second post type called Clarence. So, the first step here is to create a relationship field. We're going to leave it as a simple defined list for now, because we don't have anything to relate it to yet. We're just creating a place to start. We're just going to call it Home World. And this will allow us to store our Jedi's home planet. But instead of typing it out as a field, we can type it out at, we can add it as a post type from the planet's post type, and therefore we're able to link between the two, we're able to link all the Jedi's that are from this post type, from this planet. So we're gonna add our second pod so that we can have our relationship. Same system, we've given a name, we keep it a plural label. Uh, we're gonna add another picture field here. And this time, and then, we're going to go on, which is the second part of creating our, our relate, bi-directional relationship, is we're going to add a field here. This is the from field, if we're thinking from, you know, it's coming from Jedi to planets. We're saying this field is called Native Jedi, and we set it as a relationship, and then what's it related to? It's related to the Jedi's post type. You'll see all of the possible options here, the other post types, taxonomies, other WordPress uh, objects, for instance, could be related to users. Right, if some of the users on your sites have Jedi powers. The, now, we're, we're going to go, if we go back into the other pod, we're able now, because we have the relationship field related to Jedi, when we get to the Jedi, we can go into this field that we created before, home world, 
which we originally had called just as a simple relationship. We can now say it's related to planets. What, it, what And we have an option of any field related to this host type in there. So we're able to set this bidirectional relationship now, where when we save field items in, in Homeworld, we're actually saying what host in planets is it related to. And this is one of the most powerful features of pods, and it's made very simple. Uh, it, it's the fact that this bidirectional relationship allows you to assign a pod as the value of a, a item in a pod as the value of the field in your pod. It's a lot of power. It's, this is what CMSs are built on. So that's as simple as it takes. We added three fields to one. We added two fields to the other. Uh, when I set up this demo, that took me about three to five minutes. When I got started with the platform, that might be taking me ten minutes. Uh, so the next step is how do we then display this in the front end once we have our content in the pods. And there are a lot of options. Lots of people will say to me in the support forms, what's the right way to do it? And I don't have an answer for you. We've got a lot of ways. One of them is going to be right for you. For a lot of people, pods, template is, pods templates is the answer because it requires that you understand our magic tags, which is can you put uh, brackets and an at sign in front of the field name, and basic HTML. And they work based on, as I said, a magic tag. We'll get into that. We have two plugins to help you out on top of that. They're not required, but they make this a lot easier. Pods Frontier, as I said, adds advanced uh, tools and tricks to the templating engine. And then Pods Frontier Auto Template, which allows you to automatically output these uh, templates into the front end, automatically injects them into your theme. So these are examples of magic tags. The first one, you'll notice that's not a custom field. That's a post table field, post type. But we're able to use those. We could use post, uh, post updated on date, these sorts of things, post content, post excerpt. They're available to us as if they were pods fields, even though they're regular WordPress fields. Um, this is an example of how we can use our HTML markup with them, right? We have an image field and then we put it in our image tags. It's that simple, we already know this stuff. We can also do this dot notation, so we can get a subset of the image field. We could say, I want the thumbnail size from the image field, or I want the large size, or I want any other registered size. We can also use, we can traverse into relationships, this next example here. Related post type, so what's the field? Native Jedi would be the example here, dot post title. We can get the title of that field. And the last example is we can use the value of the field as the first argument for a function. So for example, if you had a function that outputted a media player, you had a media field. For instance, if your field's outputting a link from YouTube, you can do the name of that field, comma, WPO embed get, and it'll use that function from WordPress to embed the media player. One thing here, it's important to escape properly. We always want to make sure that we're uh, valid, we're properly validating our data on the way out. So, as I said, you can pass the value of your field through a function by doing comp. So, escape URL, escape ATTR, escape HTML, these are built-in WordPress functions that we use for validating our data. So, we could say this permalink field, uh, that's another field where it's, it will give you the value of uh, the ID pass to get permalink, but now we say pass it through escape URL and make sure that our markup is clean. Post title, again, it's an attribute, so we say escape the attribute. And then some other type of field, uh, we can say escape HTML. And so that's a complete example of how we're going to build a link and make sure that all, all of our data comes out properly. Um, Pods Frontier adds a lot of neat stuff to pods templates. One thing it does, is, which I'll show you in a bit, is these control blocks. These gives us, gives us basic logic in a really easy to use fashion. Our each, if, else, these basic things that go into making the programming language, we make these very easy. So for instance, when you have a related field that's got multiple values, we can go each and get through each item. Or we can say, I want to show the name of the field and I want to show the field value. Okay, well, what happens if there isn't a field value? Now I'm going to have a label and nothing, that looks bad. So we'd say if 
if we have this field, then show the label. Uh, so there's a lot of those things. We also have a tab to show special CSS or JavaScript just for this one template. And we also have an advanced layout editor uh, that's coming soon. It's not totally finished, but it'll allow you to stick multiple templates, multiple forms in, and have custom queries and build a whole page layout using just Pods Frontier in Pods templates. So this would be your most basic looking template. Post title, pictures, homework. This would just, we don't add an HTML markup, but this is how we, as easy as it would be to get my uh, data from my Jedi post, uh, post back. Uh, one thing here, uh, people, we, this is going to be my Jedi single, because when we get to pod sprint here, auto template, we're able to say, do I want a single template, do I want an archive template? It's important to remember that the naming gets a little confusing between Pods Frontier and Pods Frontier Auto Template. Sorry. A little late for that one. Um, one thing that we can do with our magic tags is we can traverse with these dots. <coughs> so when we start here, we say homework. Remember, this was our related field, this homework. What field do I want from homework? Right, because now I'm in a different post type. I want picture. What image size? I want the source code, I want the source, and I want the medium size. And again, when we're making our caption, we can say, I want to traverse over homeworld.post type. Right? So I've moved from Jedi into planets through via this homeworlds field, and now I'm into its own fields, post type. This is starting, this is taking we're walking through the process of building up our frontier template. This is a very simple example of using in if block, where we can say, if we have pictures, output the field pictures. Right now we don't have any extra HTML markup, but if we look at the if home world, I have this H3 home world. If I don't set that value, I'm now going to have a header with no content. Unless I add if home world, now the whole block of text is, the markup is going to be skipped when we get to an item that doesn't have any markup, that doesn't have any values. Now we start to get uh, into the, we combine all these things, we add into each. This is an example where I'm building a slider. This is just using a bootstraps slider, uh, the built-in carousel. But I say, I start with if pictures, right? Because I don't want to do any of this. I don't want to have the controls for a slider if I don't have any images in my slider. Do my wrap up, my wrapping here, and then we get into each. Because pictures was a multi-select field. So, we can go through here and then, because we're already in pictures field, I don't need to do this extra dot traverse. Before I would say pictures dot source, but now because I'm already in pictures, I can just go directly to source. I can just go directly to post title. And now, this will create a loop. It's the equivalent of PHP of doing a for each loop. Uh, but it's this simple. I go each pictures, write my HTML markup, and I'm done. And the other thing that we've added here, so the each loop ends here, but that's separate from my if block, right? This <coughs> entire thing I don't want to show unless I have pictures. The other thing, cool tag that we have added with um, with Pods Friend here is this once block. If you look at the way that uh, Bootstrap wants its markup, it wants the right class item for each item in the slider, but they want you to stay active for the first one, right? Because that's what it does, is switch out that active class in its JavaScript. So I want only the first one to, sit, to have that active class when it loads, so that way it loads as the image. So I say once, active. And that means when we go through this each loop multiple times, the first time it'll add the active class, and the, every other time it'll skip that. This is really useful when we want special markup, when you know we've ordered our field in a current in a set order and we want to highlight the first one, we could use this once block just to add additional CSS. Um, as we saw here, a few months back, Frontier adds these two extra tabs. Without Frontier, you just see template. Now we have styles and we have scripts. These will be automatically inserted once on the page 
when you use this template. So if this template's running five times on the page, it'll, it'll insert this once, but it's not gonna run on all of your pages. So in this example, I want to initialize my carousel and for Kelly yeah, in Bootstrap. It's going to automatically output the script tags for me. I just need to say jQuery.carousel, that's it. That's all I really needed for this. If I wanted to add custom style, I could add it to my style.css. As I said, there's a lot of options, whichever one works for you. Or I could say, when this template loads, I wanted to say I want to drop in some styles there. It'll automatically put a you know, style tag around it. I just put in my rules. Here's um, another example of using each. Uh, this, is, this is my planets template. <coughs> and this is a single select field on this one picture, so I just say picture.source.medium escape URL. But then again, we're, we want to show the dump. This is, as I said, this is the great thing about using a relationship field, is that instead of on my post type, on my, when I make an entry for uh, tattooing, to say Luke Skywalker lives there as text, and now I have to update this manually, now why am I using the computer? I can just enter what my post type, so I can select for my Jedi post type. Or when I created Luke Skywalker in the Jedi, I select his planet as Tatooine, and he's automatically here on Tatooine. So this is another example of using our each loop. I'm saying this twice because it's the trickiest thing, is that here we did picture.source to get into the field. Here, because we said each native Jedi were already in the field, into the loop, so we can just go directly to permalink. Permalink post title. These are from the related post type because we're already in them through this field. And this is allowing us to move through a relationship field, in this case on planets uh, that came from the native Je from the Jedi post type. What if you wanted to refer back to the parents, uh, like the original post title parents? Uh, well, that's what's happening here. This is the difference. This is going to be used for planets. But in that loop, it's in the each loop. Um, not going to happen. Work or it's just inefficient? It, it, no, because be, once we do each native Jedi, because this is a relationship field, we are it's as if we are inside of that related post type. So post title refers to the uh, the post title of the related item. So we did it here, right? And before we got into the each loop, and that's the room that's the post type of the parent. And we could have we could have put it right before the each, but once we get into the each, we're no longer in the current post momentarily. It's as I if can't, I can't think of a use case for it. Yeah, it's a good point though. It's a good distinction, right? What's the difference between this post title and that post title? Because these show two different things. Well, and this could show ten things, right? If I have ten related things, but these ten would be different than that. That would say Tatooine. This would say Luke Skywalker. <coughs> Can you specify load order on the scripts and styles? Yeah. Uh, in the header. In the header period? Yeah. Is that, that can bother you? Well, it can, and then don't do it that way. You don't have to, right? <laughs> this is an option. You can add it manually. Add it to your, to use WP and Q scripts in yeah. your thing. But if, you, if you're trying to avoid the whole not programming and stuff. Well, so. it's one of those things where it's going to work for a lot of, it's going to work for most situations. This pods front here and pods templates, have limitations, but it's pretty powerful. At some point, you're going to get beyond its capabilities, and this is only one way to do this. So, are you guys just inserting that code into the output, or are you? Well, so right now, yeah, right now, the just adding a template doesn't actually output. It. We're going to get to outputting it in a second. Um, just having a template doesn't do anything to your front end. No, yeah, no, we're about I'm, to saying, I'm saying when it's output, are you taking whatever style or script I'm putting and just inserting it into the page, or are you calling it as an external script or style sheet? For these, for the, it, it is in line. And that works, but not always. Okay. And that's the, the that's something I'd say about templates. It works in a lot of cases. It doesn't work at all. I've got seven other ways to get your content out. This is the easiest. But, but it's, not, it's not a register order in you. Yeah. So, Getting it, what we're starting to get ahead to is using Pods Frontier Auto Template. Again, sorry about the name confusion. There are two different plugins. Um, this provides automatic output of Pods templates. 
So before I called that single Jedi. That's the, to, to, what, so I can say this is what I want to use for single post types. I can also have an archive, right? So we're used to looking at our blog index where you see all our posts. Well, custom post types can. By default, they don't, but we can select that as an option in Pods Editor and say I want a archive. Pods Frontier Auto Template will allow you to have a separate, or even to set the same one, a separate template for single view and archive view. In the Pods Editor, once we activate Pods Frontier Auto Template, we see this extra tab, and it's this simple. We turn it on or off. We say the name of our template, Jedi Single, Jedi Archive, or we just say Jedi if we just had one. And then we can choose where we want it to output. Do we want it to happen before the post content? Do we want it to happen after the post content? Or do we want it to replace the post content? And then it's, it's up to your theme. It's now integrating with your theme. Wherever your theme would put out the post content, this is where your template's going to go. So as I said before, by default, making a pods template doesn't do anything to your front end. It creates possibilities for the front end. There are a lot of different ways in which you can get your pods template out. This is the simplest way, is you just put, turn on this plugin, click that box, and tell it where you want it. And that's it. That's literally all it takes to add two custom post types, make them related, so you have an auto, automatic updating bidirectional relationship, create templates, and have them automatically output on the front of your site. Uh, are there any more questions? So this which you just gone through is just if you're using the posts approach as opposed to the ACT approach? So Pods Frontier <coughs> and Pods Templates will work with any content type. Okay. Here. Pods Frontier Auto Template will only work with post type pods. And taxonomies, okay. custom so, taxonomies. So the word, both WordPress, like on post tile and such, you couldn't call that in the ACT, you can only call it with the pods. Yes. If so you mean in the, in the posts and pages. Right. Okay. Well, you could, when you use an advanced content type, you're creating your own field name. So by right. default, we use name. Yeah, yeah, I know. But yeah. you could change it to post type. So sure, That's the not going to be able to draw on those things. That are yes, WordPress. but if you had two related uh, advanced content types, you can do related field dot name yeah, right. again. Yeah. It's a it's a slight it's a slight distinction in naming because right. when we have a post type pod or a taxonomy pod, we're pulling both yeah. from the custom fields and from the built in fields. Whereas an advanced content type yes. doesn't have built in. Fields. And then secondly, the, so is the, the frontier auto template from understanding so that's sort of replacing yeah. or alternate to using a pods page to call the template. Yes, pods pages were built to solve a problem, which was that. WordPress itself, in its routing engine, doesn't know about advanced content types. So, and they're, they're not the easiest thing to use. And, but they solve a problem. Right. With custom post types and taxonomies, that problem doesn't exist. WordPress knows your custom post right. type, your taxonomy exists. Right. The thing is, is that what WordPress doesn't know is about your custom field. It knows right. they're there, but your theme isn't built to have right. your not thing. Field. So your template is your, um, your template is one of your ways, of many, as I said, to get those custom post types out, to get those custom fields out. Because your theme wasn't built with your specific pods in mind, it was built with post title, post content. Somebody else had a question? I did. Uh, those magic tags, can they be used at all in uh, just the theme files? So, yes, but. Okay. I'll show you if you want. Catch me later. I'll show you a tweaky way of doing it code-wise because if you're going where I'm going, it does create the possibility of having great separation of concerns, right? That I could potentially have an HTML file in my plugin, and I don't know why I say it hypothetically because I do this, where, and then I call it using PHP from another file, right? That said, and I've done this, and it has advantages and disadvantages. My jury's still out on whether or not the fact I like that I do this. In your theme file, there are a lot of other ways of doing this. We have our pods class that can get pods fields, and if it's a custom post type with, with meta fields, you would just use get post meta. So that is a option, but if you're working in your theme, the better way to do it is generally using the pods class, pods field, pods display, or using get post meta. Yeah. But yeah, if you want, I'll show you the, my, my weird workaround for doing this in uh, code-wise, because it does green. One of the things that's great about this system, whether you're doing it that way or you're doing it in a template through the UI, 
is that all of a sudden your theme becomes a templating system that's full of PHP, and when you're writing your content, you're not messing with any PHP. This is one of the disadvantages of PHP. It's bad for making templates and for markup. It works, but you know, you're opening and closing PHP tags, you're having to do echo this, dot this, dot this, or long sprint F statements. This is a real this is one great way to clean that up and do your markup in one place in your logic in another place. And then where that fails is you need simple logic statements like each if once, those sorts of things. Well, we give that to you in this sort in this sort of pseudo uh, shortcut, which we call logic block. I have a quick question. When you were building out the slideshow on one of your sliders earlier, you had the if pictures and then you built out the whole you know, slider carousel. Um, is there a way to do something where you can check to see how many pictures? You did if pictures, then you built the slideshow. Is there a way to check you know, length or size? There so if there's one, or do it this output. If there's a lot, do this one. If you have more than this, put it out this way. You know, something of that kind of logic. Eventually. There is right now a counter in the loop, inside the each loop. There's a way to, and I'd have to look at what it is because it's something that we're still working on in Cross Frontier. There is a counter going, so you could potentially output the number of iterations. Mm -hmm. And right now, if blocks can't, you can't set your own if e this equals that, but we're getting to that. One of the things that we're still working on with Cross Frontier is defining your own logic box. So you could potentially write your own function to go in there, or we could provide more for you. And once we have that functionality done, we could do those sort of logical comparisons. Right, because right now, if eventually somewhere the code tracks back to a logical comparison, but it can only do, does the, you know, does total items greater than zero, right? Yeah. But we're working on the infrastructure for you to define your own. So if I, if I use the pods, can I just Is there an easy way to package that up somehow so that I can take it to the next project? Yes. We have a couple of things. We have our migrate packages component, which allows you to output all of your pods configuration, and that includes templates, pages, uh, and a few other, and uh, helpers, helpers is old for pods 1.0, but we still, yeah, back to compatibility. And we have a new tool, uh, we just put it into beta at the beginning of the week, called Pods Deploy, which uses the WordPress REST API. And it's a one-click solution for deploying a Pods package in, to a remote site, and also updating the bi-directional relationships, so that way they pass correctly. And, um, okay, we, we need to wrap this up to stay on schedule, but I was just gonna say, one of the great things about this is, is its portability, right? Because everything that I just did has nothing to do with my theme. I switch my theme, and all of this all of this stays, which is great because if my theme looks good today, trends are going to change, and it's not going to look good in two years. Right? It's going to look two years old. Uh, one last question. Yeah. Uh, just just like uh, in your text, you've got text view. Have, do, do you have or have you considered like a code view, where where you just switch over and tweak the page view a little? No, that's an interesting idea. Somebody's got a somebody's got a. He got David Kramer, who develops Pods Frontier, his brain on that, but don't because I'm trying to get him to do some other things, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, that would be neat. What about a regular Pods template, though? Isn't that pretty much what that is? Yeah. A pods template. It would be neat. Well, what you're asking is, can I tweak into the PHP? Yeah. Well, so what we're trying to get away from is the fact that as long as you have the security shortcode set right, you can actually open PHP tags. Because before we had Pods Frontier, there were a lot of things where there was no way around that. We're trying to get away from that because that's a security issue. Okay. And also just eval is not a great thing to use. But you can do that. That is always your workaround. Part of the point of having these each and if loops in that eventually the ability to define your own is so you won't have to do that. Right. But it's there. It's not. The issue of, of, you know, if you just want five images in your slider, you can go throw, throw a little, you know, well, yeah, so, 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 you can do it with PHP, it's just, it just it starts yeah. to get to the point of diminishing returns where it's like, why did I use Pods template anyway if I was just going to write a bunch of PHP code? Would it get me 80% of the way there? Yes, that's the question. Is where do we, where is that, and this is a every person unique question, is can it get me, sometimes it can get me 100% of the way there, okay, it can get me 90, 85% of the way there, and I have to do one, one little tweak on top of it. 
or some users that you really can't get them all the way there, and we have seven other ways of doing this. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay, great. Thank you.